Hey everyone, Andrew here from Intel 2 Agents Podcast. Yes, you are on the right feed, but no, this is not a normal show. I want to let you know right now that what you are about to hear is not suitable for work. It is likely also not appropriate for children. If you are sensitive to racy topics, go ahead and hit that delete button right now. You might not like this episode. But now that you've been warned, please welcome to a special RDH Rant Takeover episode with Heather, Anna, and Liz. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of RDH Rant Takeover. Joining me today are some bitches I met on a street in New York City. <laughs> Heather and Liz. Hello. <laughs> What's up, hey. guys? Hi. So for today's topic, we figured we'd venture into the realm of difficult patients and how we deal with those difficult patients. Heather, I know you were like a little reluctant to do this episode, but I want to like preface the episode by saying this isn't like patient bashing. No. We're not going to be bashing patients by any means. Basically, it's just to discuss the various difficulties that we encounter because we work with the public and the public sucks sometimes. Mm -hmm. And yeah, how we handle difficult. those situations, you know, basically just how we handle that. Yeah. I feel like we got a lot yeah. of good feedback from yeah. how we deal with difficult patients. You know, it, it, it very easily could have like, turned into a big rant thread where we're just ranting about, you know, this, that, and the other. But it actually ended up being pretty constructive and productive. So uh, I think that the, the ranters absolutely. were picking up what we were putting down. So, yeah. So one of like, the biggest issues I think that us as hygienists encounter is the patient that refuses x-rays. Yes. Right. Don't you feel that way? Oh, it's like a constant yes. battle. I think it's a daily battle. Yeah. I have patients that I just know when I see them on the schedule, I just get immediate like ugh, an anxiety. Cause I'm like, they're going to refuse it. The doctors want it. We need it. I just don't want to deal with it. Mm -hmm. Can't you just clean my teeth? <laughs> yeah 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 and nobody understands why but... no i mean like so that's actually nobody understands why that's actually one of the things that i try to get out of the patient like oh what's your apprehension i think that that's like a good avenue to go down mm -hmm. when you get that patient yes. that refuses x-rays is try to understand like what their rationale is and a lot of them are just misinformed and they feel like Oh, I don't want extra radiation. And it's like, well, it's the equivalent to eating a banana. Like, it's really not, you know, anything significant. Yeah. And then most people are like, wait, bananas mm -hmm. have radiation? <laughs> Everything well, does. I guess. Yeah. But, I mean, I don't know. Um, I, I just use bananas as a, like, I don't even know if yeah. that's true. Okay. Yeah, yeah. No, it is. Well, it is? it's on okay. the little graph that I have. All right. <laughs> I didn't I know mean, that. I tell people, do you live in a brick house? Mm -hmm. Um do you walk out to the mm -hmm. mailbox mm -hmm. um, when the sun's and out? In an airplane, Do you take yeah. a flight. That's a big one. Airplane, yeah, yeah. Like, and then I get the patients that come back. It's like, well, yes, I do those things, but I still don't want this extra radiation because I don't have to have it. So no, you do. Why would I expose be... myself more? <laughs> but here's the thing: like, you know, I, I always, I always approach this subject on like, I totally get it. You know, I always say that I totally get where you're yeah. coming from, but. Unfortunately, it's a liability issue. We do need these x-rays. And we have like a set protocol in my office. Yes, that's important. Um, the doc yeah. yeah, that's important. Because if your doctor's yes. not backing you up and your doctor doesn't care, it, it's, you know, you can't, there's no then way for you to fight like, that okay. battle. You can't fight that battle. So in my office, every new patient has to have a full mouth series. It's not a choice. Mm -hmm. Like yes. we need a full mouth series. That's it. If the patient doesn't want it, then unfortunately, we cannot see you today. And, the, and you know, I would love to do that for you, but we can't because it's a liability issue or whatever. 99% no. of the time, I've only had one patient walk out after like describing it to mm -hmm. them, like how we can't just, you know, you're a new patient. Like say you have an infection somewhere and we don't know that because we don't have x-ray vision and something yeah. happens tomorrow, you can turn around and basically sue us because so, we just saw you. Like, how can we do right. a comprehensive exam if we don't have the x-rays to do that? And you also want to say, like, when your doctor tells you you need an x-ray, mm -hmm. do you fight them this hard? No. No. You exactly. go get that x-ray or that MRI or that CAT scan. Mm -hmm. So I don't understand. Well, because people don't value dentistry mm -hmm. in dentistry. They don't value it. So 
it's our job to make them value it. That's really like, yeah, yeah, it's our job to like, let them know the value in taking a full mouth series. What, you know, what are we looking for? What are we doing? You know, it's not just because we want to expose you or get your insurance money. You know, a lot of them there's think, actually yeah. a legit Just reason. Me. A lot of patients Just think that we're, we're not getting still, much. That it's more of a like cosmetic based type service industry. Yeah, mm-hmm. that it's more of a service industry mm-hmm. rather than a medical industry, and like getting them on board, which sucks. But more, I I feel mm-hmm. like a lot of, that there is a little shift that, that is happening because I will see people chattering online. Now I never get involved in online discussions when it's not like in a dental page or whatever. Um, but I see more and more people talking about how, oh, well, you know, if you have a toothache, you should go see your dentist about it because that can cause, you know, a heart problem or a brain problem. So I do see people mm-hmm. really starting to catch on that it can cause other issues. Um, and honestly, I blame us for, I mean, not us as hygienists and not like us three, but <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, us, as, us as the dent, like the, the professional dental person. Mm-hmm. I feel yeah. like for years, it's never, you know, it was the value of dentistry was never really presented in a proper way. And I feel like we're trying to like segue out of that, where this, you know, your periodontal disease is linked to heart disease and Alzheimer's and, uh, you know, linking that diabetes. S- yeah, like systemic links yeah. and letting the patient know that. It's, you know, I always tell patients, this is funny with SRP. That's another thing that a lot of people refuse. Like, I don't, I just want the cleaning my insurance covers. Um, But one of the things I like the patient, one of the things that I say is I always link the systemics to periodontal disease and how many patients are like, oh my God, I had no idea. Like, And I always say to them, like, I, you know, you can tell me that you don't care about your teeth and you don't care if you lose them. That's your right. Like, Mm -hmm fine. You know, if you don't, uh, it's not even about your teeth at this point. It's about your overall yeah. health. Yeah. And somebody wrote that on there. Like, mm-hmm. look, I'm not working. I think it was Dottie. Dottie was like, basically told him, look, I'm just trying to do my job. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't get paid any more or any less with you taking these x-rays or not. Um, you need this work done. I don't get paid any more or any less. I don't work on commission. It's your mouth. The tooth is going to break off and I'm not going to lose any sleep over it at night. <laughs> Damn Dottie. <laughs> but, oh, Dottie. But we're, I'm, we're not doing this to make a penny. I'm doing this because I care about your yeah. health. Mm-hmm. Like, you see, I can't use it that It benefits argument. you, not me. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. and sometimes I get a lot of the grumpy old men. They're like, oh, I'm not doing that. I'm not. And so I, I think one time I was just like, okay, fine. It's your mouth, not mine. I don't care. Mm-hmm. Like mm-hmm. he just was being such a jerk and just grouchy and old. And I, he was one of those that I knew was, it was coming. And I just had, didn't feel like it. I just wasn't dealing with it that day. And he just kind of looked at me like shocked, like, wait, what? I'm like, I don't care. If fine. you don't care, I don't, I don't, don't care. Get, don't get the x-rays. I don't care. I don't know if we can't see what's going on in your mouth. Like, I can't guess if you don't care. I don't care. It's not my mouth. I mm-hmm. I remember saying it, it's your mouth, not mine. So I don't care. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And he just sat there for a minute and he's like, okay, fine. You can do it. It's like he was like, looking oh, for a shit, fight. It sounds like it, <laughs> oh shit. That works. Like he was looking to argue with somebody. Mm-hmm. I literally had the grumpy old man. Um, yes. I love yesterday, grumpy old men. I do. I don't know why. Yesterday I had, I and do. I, it was FMX time. Um, so, uh, I told him, I said, we have to do this full mouth series today. You know, it's been, it had been a while, um, for him. Um, because I think that he kind of had a history of, of trying to refuse x-rays. So, um, he said, well, I don't want to do that today. I'm kind of in a hurry, blah, blah, blah. And I said, it's still, you're still scheduled for the same amount of time. Um, yes. it's not, yes. you know, it's, it's not a matter of time. You're here for an hour, no matter what we do. Uh, so, um, he said, well, I just rather not do it today. I was like, okay, well, let me message my doctor and see what he says. So, you know, typey, 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 type. And, uh, of course, you know, my doctor said, no, let's go ahead and take him today, which I knew he would. I mean, it's kind of like a, you know, a ploy, like I'm going to ask and he's going to say, it, do yeah. it because he has our back. Right. But at least you get to pawn off and pawn it off on yeah. him rather than yourself. Exactly. Like, and so yeah. I turned around and I yeah. said, uh, doctor wants us to do it today. And he was like, well, okay. And just kind of like, you know, talked about how he hated it the whole time. Now I don't get a whole lot of patients like that. 
really every god everybody's I do. so I cooperative. Do. I do. Um, I did have one. Mm-hmm. No, I have tons that do not I want X rays ever. I really don't. Most of the time, they just want to put it off until next time. Um, I did have one who refused, and it had been two years, and that's Doctor's Limit. He's like, no, we're not mm-hmm. doing, you know, nobody passed you. And hers, her reasonings, and I have to respect it, were holistic. And she was more trying to follow that, that path, like, you know, functional medicine and all that. She, well, then go find a holistic dentist. And we did. Dentist. I did that for exactly. her. Exactly. Mm-hmm. I, I gave her a list. Mm-hmm. Actually, I said, well, I know a couple. I said, let me look around. Because she was a valued patient. She wasn't somebody that we were just going to boot out the door. But she just kind of was going a different way with her health because she had some things going on. And um, I said, but you did by sending her to the holistic dentist, t- technically, right? Like you put her out. Like, but I did it nicely. I was day. like, well, sorry, okay. you know, you got to yeah, go. Exactly. I said, let me, um, Bye, let bitch. me Google no. <laughs> and I will send you an email if that's okay with some um, leads for you. And she was like, that's great. Okay. And so I did. And, you know, we parted on good terms. So there was no like bad Google mm-hmm. review or anything like that. So mm-hmm. she was nice exactly. about it. What do you mean you're not going to clean my yes, teeth? Yes, exactly. She was nice about it. We were nice about it. <laughs> yeah. So it was not a burned bridge, so to speak. No, what I find funny is that the patients that refuse x-rays and use the excuse of, I'm in a hurry today, I don't have time, but they spend 15 minutes arguing about yes. it. And I, I'm like, in the time we're arguing, we could have taken these x-rays yes. and we could have been into your appointment already. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I just find that funny. Mr. Like, Grumpy, <laughs> Mr. Grumpy yesterday. Yeah. Um, he's a chatty guy. And so like, he doesn't have time for x-rays, but he's going to sit there and talk to me about this, that, and the other, every time I pull the instruments out of his mouth. And I'm like, dude, exactly. Dude. Yeah. <laughs> Cause he's lonely. A Aww. lot of older people are lonely. They just want, they don't have anyone else he's to talk to. He's getting ready to retire. Oh, flesh him a booby, Liz. <laughs> Liz, flesh him a booby. <laughs> he's getting ready to retire and he's moving out of state. So, and I'm like, <laughs> bye. Yeah. I feel, so I always ask people if they don't just blatantly say why we do have a lot of patients that don't have insurance and they're like, I don't want to pay for it. That's a lot of money and I don't want to pay for it. So usually the first time the dentist will be like, okay, that's fine. But we need oh, to do wait, it What if they're time. like a new patient? Like what if it's a new patient with no insurance? Oh no, 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 oh, no, okay, no, okay. no, all I got new you. patients. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and they get quoted, no insurance. They get quoted a price. Mm-hmm. This yeah. is what it's going to be with the full mouth. Okay. So if it's just like my regular like perio maintenance or profi mm-hmm. or whatever, and they don't have insurance, they're like, I don't want to do it. My office has a rule of two years mm-hmm. maximum. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, if it's not been two years, I'm like, um, I just don't have the money. I don't want to do it right now. It's financial. We'll say, okay, that's fine. But we have to do them next time. And then we make sure that they walk out with, a treatment plan that has the cost. Yeah. For the and next, like, okay, visit. you have six mm-hmm. months, you know, mm-hmm. five bucks put away for the next six mm-hmm. months or, you know, whatever we'll pay for those x-rays. If mm-hmm. they come back and they still want to refuse, you know, of course we educate, we explain till we're blue mm-hmm. in the face. If it's, you know, I've heard some people say, I don't work on commission. Like I'm not making money off of you. I'm not doing this. Yeah. Like, because I want I, more money. Yeah. It's like, um, for X, I don't, bring, I don't really even bring that, that up. I never bring that. Yeah. Mon- the monetary value of it. I don't, I, for, it's, to me, it's like, cause I do, I do get paid based on production, but that's not why I'm taking your x-rays. Like yeah. <laughs> I'm taking yeah, your x-rays right. because you need them. You know, it's not, it's right. You know, so I don't even bother yeah. segue, you know, to segue into that discussion for us, a lot of people and those people that still refuse because it say it's been two years and they're mm. like, I just don't have it. Blah, blah, blah. The doctors I work for are f- wonderful and they will say, okay, fine. This time we'll do it at no charge. We'll take those four. Oh, we don't do no that. Charge. that. Uh-uh. <laughs> but it's, I'm sorry. No. <laughs> Why? Why? That devalues what we do. Because... I hate that dentistry does that. I hate it. <laughs> well, yes and no. No, so I'm thinking... not taking responsibility for your dental health. Like if you don't want x-rays and it's our time limit. We're very, so we're very the, like regimented about that. Like, yeah, if it, you know, if it's been and the time I, limit, you. yeah, if we're, I'm with if, you. if we're past that time limit and you come in and you say, I don't want x-rays, we're not going to, okay, this time we won't, but next time you have to No, that is our time limit. And that's it. Like it's not yeah. a negotiable thing and we will not yeah. do it for free. No, I hate that. that we do. does that. Yeah, we do. And I mean, mm. 
and I'm empathetic and sympathetic and I I'm like, okay, well, I mean, it's a, not my business. Like mm-hmm. it's not, I don't run it. So I just do what they tell me to do. Of course. Yeah. Um, but we try to say like, okay, this time, because it's so important, like I need to know what's going on in your mouth and I can't see it. But I think maybe they'll do it at no charge because then they don't want the patient like walking out the door and possibly never coming back. Bye. And then we're missing the out on the profi. Whatever, man. I know. I know. We, uh, whatever, man. Is different. <laughs> I know. I know. <laughs> it's not my business. The thing is, is if, <laughs> I know, but if like, they walk but out, if they're, then anywhere else they go. Are, they're going to run into the same thing. They go. They're going to do thing. x-rays. It's the same thing. I know, but you and can't if they're gonna tell bitch these about, that. If they're going to bitch about $50 for x-rays, are they going to do that $900 crown? No. So what value, like, I mean, I hate to I say know. it that way, but it's, you know, or the patients that refuse to fill out paperwork. It's like, if you're going to be that much of a Karen up front, like, and not fill out our paperwork and our medical history and our HIPAA and all that stuff. I mean, I know HIPAA doesn't matter, but, um, you know, for us, it's kind of like I we don't want to keep you as a patient mm-hmm. because you're a difficult yeah. patient. It doesn't end at just that. It then segues off into other problems of. So that's yeah. actually you a, know, a this, good transition, though, is mm-hmm. um, going mm-hmm. into, you know, the patients who refuse their medical histories, because I know that that's something that yeah. a lot of a lot of yeah. us deal with. That was the mm-hmm. other thing top on mm-hmm. the list yeah. mm-hmm. was patients refusing. And we get that a lot. Like people just get they're like, it's not your business. But it is. I know. I don't mm-hmm. give a shit what medicines mm-hmm. you take, but we we, we are healthcare, mm-hmm. we and we have, have to, to know. know. I'm not gonna like think about this for another two seconds after you tell me, mm-hmm. like, yeah, whatever. Yeah, no, I, 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 I agree. So, what do you, what do you tell the patients? What do you tell them? So, what I say is, I'll say like, I get it. I know it's so annoying to update this paperwork. I get it, or to do, you know, if it's a new patient, yeah. to do all this mm-hmm. paperwork. But there's so many links to, you know, to medications, to your dental health, yeah. that it's really an important part of the visit and us knowing what you're taking and if there's any other interactions with yeah. what we might be doing. Mm-hmm. You know, so I get it. It's annoying, but we do need it. Like I always like I, yeah. I don't know. I always come at my patients with the, I totally understand where you're coming from. I feel yeah. like that brings them down. That, yes. It's not like they're looking to fight at that point and they'll, yes, you know, like fluoride is a perfect example. We have a ton of people who are like, fluoride's a neurotoxin. It's going to kill my pineal gland and like, I'm, you know, my third, my third eye, it's going to die and I'm not going to have psychic abilities. No. Do you have psychic abilities but, right now? <laughs> I don't. I, I had fluoride when I was a kid, so that's probably why. But it anyway. In the water. <laughs> no, we don't have fluoride in the water on Long Island, thankfully. But um, instead, what we do here is they give fluoride supplements, like systemic fluoride supplements, like your polyvifluor, it's called. Yeah. Um, you know, but the funny thing about fluoride is in, um, in hygiene school, I did an entire paper on the pros and cons of fluoridating water. Mm-hmm. And I wasn't very well liked for my take on it. <laughs> so I don't want to get into that because I'm going to probably get like a lot of hate yeah. mail, but that's it. That's yeah. a different topic like, so, for a different podcast episode. You know, of course, but when they refuse fluoride and I always ask why, you know, why is that? And they're like, oh, it's a neurotoxin and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, okay, I get where you're coming from. I did my paper on this subject, you know, in systemic fluoride. And, you know, this is a topical version. Yes. I agree with you. Fluoride should not be ingested. It doesn't need to be ingested. But this is a topical application. It's a different mode of transmission, blah, 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 blah. And most of the times they're like, oh, I didn't know that. Okay, I'll do it. Mm. So it's almost like I sympathize with them. Like I get where you're coming from. I agree with you on this point or that point, but this is different. Yeah. Or um, so they're more apt to be like, oh, I get it. You know, I didn't know that or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. And that's when you want to say that's because you didn't take the classes I did. Like I went mm-hmm. to school for this. So would you just let me do yeah. my job? Where I wish get, I could say that. Your little degree? I know you do. I, wish. <laughs> I know. And I feel like what goes along with all this, like the patients refusing x-rays, the patients refusing to do the med history, the, the SRP is just like, I'm sure we all start with education, education, mm-hmm. education, and explaining mm-hmm. why it's important. 
And mm-hmm. it's usually um, the barrier is they don't want to do it because a financially, yeah, they can't mm-hmm. afford it, mm-hmm. or they're afraid, and they don't have the knowledge. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Because they would rather trust. And so um, you know the dentistry, the dentistry Google. they degree mm-hmm. uh, degree they got off of a Facebook meme. Yep. Mm-hmm. Than you know people who actually someone who studied study it for and years. continue mm-hmm. to study it. So. But to go back to the x-rays really quick, when, because I have a lot of these. I have gaggers. Like, mm-hmm. oh my gosh. So a lot of patients don't want x-rays because they gag. And I mean, like, it is That's valid. <laughs> That's it valid. Is. And it's hard. It or they're torn. Tor- oh. People where I live must be, like, yes. clinching day and night because they're mm-hmm. tore eye like touches on the bottom they have the huge ones on the palate mm-hmm. and so that i get and that's hard to work around it's uncomfortable um, but it is it's two uncomfortable. seconds and, and i you just say, hold it for two seconds and i'll run out press the button you can yeah. open we got it we got this the biatch. gaggers is a little <laughs> bit harder because they start gagging mm-hmm. and that is hard so sometimes i do things i probably shouldn't like have someone push the button for me why i, I do that i do that I do that I with hold kids it. a lot. With kids, with the sensor. I do it with kids too. Yep. I know we're not supposed to, but whatever. We all do it. <laughs> we all do. Why? How are we preaching that there's very little radiation? And then in I x-rays. can't stay in the room. Like I don't even. And care. then I I'm can't stay in the kids. I mean, but mm-hmm. yes, yes, we do it mm-hmm. every single day. So that you know, where they just maybe have to do it once mm-hmm. a year. That mm-hmm. is completely different. So I try not to, and I still use like the little holder, mm-hmm. like my fingers not but I just lost my train of thought that's okay that's all right (laughs) sorry but that I mean patients suck that's the train of thought no I'm only kidding they don't I'm joking I'm joking I'm joking (laughs) oh gaggers so salt I try salt that usually does did you see the um did you see the post on Facebook they took an endo file and put it in the chin Acupuncture. And the patient, I have yes. saved that. I'm sending that to my bosses right now. I, I really need to like to do that. Yeah, send it to me too because I lost the post. But anyway, I think that's. I, I took I a picture. Just send that to my bosses. Yes, I want to try that too. Are we allowed like, to stick an endo file though in someone's chin? I'm not, but maybe dentist. my boss will come in and yeah, do it. I don't think we are. <laughs> I mean, if the patient approves. <laughs> so when it comes, okay. So the medical histories we have to educate. Mm-hmm. I think for us, the biggest thing that people hate about medical histories is the it's length of like, it. <laughs> well, the length, but it's all like online. And we do have a huge geriatric older mm-hmm. population, which we're now we're working like new social media. We just hired to bring in younger people, mm-hmm. but it's just like we send them a link like here, your appointment's coming up. It's just like the technology and being older and like, I, they just get pissed and frustrated. I'm like, I can't do this. I'm not doing this. Like, I don't know how to do it. So we do try to like help them. Yeah. yeah like sit down in the room they're with in the them chair, and, but then that, mm-hmm. that takes a, time sometimes a lot away of from time. Yeah. Appointment. A yeah. lot of time, especially if they have a lot of meds. So I was I like, just bring a list. Any good tips. <laughs> I know. Bring a list yeah. of your meds. Yes. Mm-hmm. But That's you know always what? good. They're, and we'll tell them, you know, next time bring a list. But there are so many elderly patients who they have a lot of doctor's appointments. And especially if they're on a mm-hmm. lot of meds yeah. and have a lot of conditions. So they they are like, you know, they'll whip out that card that has their. Oh, oh they yeah. always have yeah. it. Always. They yes. Always have and they're like, it. there yes. you go. And I love that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I love that. We did that for my grandma. I made up a med list and like a surgery mm-hmm. list and like dates. And yeah, it's I'm going to be honest it's so with much you. Easier. But, our medical histories and dentistry, they are a little excessive, I have to say. Like, why do I care if you had gonorrhea in 1995? Like, yeah, I, 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 I don't care. Ours doesn't have that. Like, Ours are updated. Like, yeah, we don't but there's certain that. questions that I'm like, you know, I ask the pertinent questions, like any surgeries, yeah. what meds are, you know, any meds, heart problems, medications, uh, yeah. medications, uh, joint replacement, things that like matter. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to yeah. sit there and go through every question on the. Ours isn't. I don't feel like ours is too extensive. Um, There are Mm -hmm. a couple on there um, where I have to kind of revisit because there's no place for dates. So if somebody checks off cancer, 
Uh, it's like, okay. It's like, all right, yeah, when? when, when yeah. What, and what kind? Now? Presently? <laughs> yeah. What kind and when? Like yeah. now? Or do we need to do a med console or what? But yeah, I mean, I, for me, and especially in perio, because my gosh, there's so many things that, you know, are tied in with perio. So, you know, talking mm-hmm. to, well, why do you need to know that? Why do you need to know this? I'm like, well, like, I I'll, don't <laughs> want to know. I'll, I'll look job. at, you know, their med list and I'm like, herpes. well, for instance. <laughs> yeah. Like I'm not being nosy. I don't yeah. like, care. Just let me You're do diabetic and diabetes but then what happens show up is... in your mouth. Sometimes I can tell if I've been seeing you a long time, I'm very familiar with you. If all of a sudden you have a, like excessive bleeding and that's not for you, you need to probably have your A1C checked because your, um, because mm-hmm. your A1C is probably high or out of whack. Mm-hmm. You know, explain yeah. things like that. Or and they're like, they, oh, I have no idea. Well, tell me no updates, no medications. And then the doctor comes and does the exam and they need a tooth extracted. And then they want mm-hmm. sedated. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, okay, well, you told me that you don't have any medications. So this is a surgery. I need to know, are you on a yeah. blood thinner? Are you on any osteoporosis mm-hmm. medicine? And they're like, oh, well, I do take... And then they like sit there for, and I'm like, it's the end of the appointment. I'm running behind. I have to have, you know, now I'm updating their medical history because they told me for the last five years that they don't take Mm -hmm. anything. And now they have to have a surgery. And I'm like, well, we'll have to have a med consult if you're not being honest. And, oh yeah, I take a blood thinner and I heart medicine. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, oh my God. (laughs) We have a part. Oh, I forgot to tell you. I had my valve replaced last week. We have a place in in Vitrix. It will pull like somebody's prescription history from, I don't know from where. Yes. Mm -hmm. Oh, we have that. And yeah, we have open dental. And so I can see if they tell me I'm not on anything. I can look, I click on their little red cross and oh. I can see everything that they've been prescribed. <laughs> I mean, I can see that they're lying. Yeah. Yeah. Like, they you in. yeah. Yep. It like links up to like the I state. have no idea how it does like it. The pharmacies? It does it with de- yeah. it's, denti- it's dental magic. It's probably run by the tooth fairy. Wow. We have open <laughs> dental. Like the doctors, I think, could go and do that. No, there's a portal that they can go into to see all previous Yeah, medications. the doctors can't. Yeah. I can't. Yeah. Oh, no. Yeah. yeah. No, there's like, a, um, the there's portal, also a yeah. portal for like narcotics and things like that. So there's definitely Mm -hmm. a portal for that. Mm -hmm. So you can check to make sure that people aren't like um, hopping around looking for uh, drugs, you know, drug seeking behavior. We don't even prescribe it. Yeah, we we don't don't do We don't prescribe them anymore. Period. Um, Nope. No. Not even my oral surgeon. I've worked worked at my office for seven years. We do not do narcotics. Nope. Period. Never uh, have. But I can see on there, like, you know, even if they've been prescribed like a something for their reflux. Or something for you know oh. like you I can. can it's right there in Dentrix right oh, in their med history. I don't have Dentrix. Yep. You know. I can see it. I didn't know that. Hmm. That's pretty cool. What about yeah. the patients? How do you guys deal with the patients that say no cavitron, no suction, no water, no air? It depends. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you here? <laughs> That's exactly what I say. Like, okay, well, what do you want me to do? Like, I, I, I wave my magic wand. I'm not like, what, I, I'm confused. So as if you don't know this already, which I know you two know this already, but our listeners, my office is very like, and now I think we wish we weren't. We mm-hmm, cater yeah. to our patients. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We I, are I, huge, I get that vibe. Like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Do you need a pillow? We have weighted blankets. Oh, suck my <laughs> foot. <laughs> okay. Who's your hospitality? Thank you. Oh, no. We want you to feel comfortable. We don't want you to be afraid. We're going to be gentle. Mm-hmm. Like, No, we definitely and, and I, do that to like patients that have that. anxiety. Yeah. But not, we're not going to like sit there and cater to like every patient. You well, no, pillow, I don't say that's every patient. But if someone's... Yeah. Oh no, they're not warm. But um oh. well then you suck. No. no kidding. <laughs> um so if we know a patient has anxiety. Sorry, yes. I don't offer that yeah. to every patient. Okay. I worked in an office that did offer that shit to every patient though, but go ahead. I mean most Too patients much. know we have it. Yeah. But so we have piezos. Yeah. I know you you hate them, Anna. Yeah. I I don't, I don't really care. I mean I I've mm-hmm. done both. I, I do mm-hmm. fine with either one. Patients tend to like the piezo better 100%. because it doesn't hurt. Mm-hmm. Um, 
but my patients, the biggest reason that they don't want the power scaler or whatever you call it, ultrasonic, piezo, cavitron, they have such yeah. sensitivity to cold water. Mm-hmm. So I can't like when I go to give them a rinse, like I just have to put it in their mouth and let them yeah. swish and then suction it up and hope they don't get it all over themselves. Mm-hmm. So using a cavitron with that same cool water, like I can't do it. So I have to hand scale mm. and I have so many of those patients. Oh, I have none of those. Thank God. I, none of those. Thank so God. for me, it's, it's kind of patient by patient. If I have somebody who is trying to take control of the appointment and run the show by saying only this, only that, only this, only that. And I like it like this. And I don't like that. Then, you know, we're going to have a discussion. Um, but if mm-hmm. somebody says, Hey, um, you know, I don't like, cause I know there are a lot of patients and even people, um, in rant that have talked about, we've talked about the people who have the aversion to, um, cotton in their mouth. So if I have patients mm-hmm. that say, Hey, please don't, you know, put cotton across my teeth because it gives me the heebie jeebies and I'll, I'm like, okay, valid. I have a couple, exactly. I have a couple patients who, um, they're not a big fan of the suction. They get by, but, you know, I will put something in the note, you know, patient doesn't like, you know, the suction or um, something like that. But, you know, there, there's a line between. How do you get, of so course. You just, they don't like the suction. So you just like not. Rinse oh, no, them? you still use it. It's not a, it's not a choice. Yeah. So I did have <laughs> like, one. but you have to like segue the like gently segue them into it i want to oh, say but it's not a choice okay. i did have one yeah. patient yeah, i had a patient that wanted to sit up no, and spit every no, time I'm no, like, no no that's that is not no. happening we ain't doing it um but i had a patient who didn't like the suction and so she would swallow everything <laughs> Ew, uh... everything profi paste all of it but oh shut I'm up serious it's not toxic no i know but still you get like all joking. that and, and she would just swallow yeah it's gross with yeah the, so yeah the tartar Every, popping yes. off. Just everything. No. We're not doing no. that. We're not doing that. I'll let her do that. No. If she wants to swallow her own <laughs> junk in her mouth, no. that's fine. But, if, you know, somebody who needs to spit into a napkin, somebody who needs to sit up and spit into a cup, mm. that is absolutely Mm-mm. not happening. Um, so I have, I, yeah. I just kind of play it by ear, patient per patient. Um, but I am definitely, I mean, we have mm-hmm. seen, <laughs> we have seen these stories on, on our posts that, you know, this, uh, we had, I had a new patient to me and she requested that I only use plastic scalers. What? Yeah. That's not, why are you here? That's what? not, that's, that's, that's mm-hmm. not happening. First of all, I don't even think we have no. those anymore. They don't do anything, but yeah, I mean that kind of stuff, there's a limit to, I don't want metal on my teeth. Yeah, there's a limit to what I will accommodate mm-hmm. for your anxiety. I agree. I like what Julie Teeter said for re- people refusing the Cavitron. I usually say, let's try the worst area mm-hmm. first. Yep. Then I quickly do the worst area and then ask how it was. And most of the time they're like, okay, you can keep going. Mm-hmm. So that I was do. a good trick. So mm-hmm. I think I might try that, especially for those lower interior, all those mm-hmm. salivary gland mm-hmm. areas mm-hmm. that I'm like, oh my God, my hand is cramping up. I'm also like a hundred percent honest with the patient and tell them like, this may be I a mean, little intense. I'm not the best. I'm not the best hand scaler. I'm not. I'm not the best hand scaler. My 99% of my scaling is Cavitron. So yeah. I, I'm honest with them and say, like, I can just hand scale you, but I'm going to be honest with you. You're not getting a sufficient cleaning. There's going to mm-hmm. be biofilm left behind. There's going to be bacteria left behind. So let's try the Cavitron. If it's too much for you, we can stop. But let's at least give it a try. Yeah. 99% of the time, they're like, it's fine. You know, they, they yeah. don't flinch. They're fine. And I'm like, was that that bad? Yeah. No. Okay. We're good. Mm-hmm. Jesus. I have the people that just like jump out of the chair. It scares the yeah. shit out of I me. I know. I know. And I jump and they jump. And then my foot's still on the pedal and yes. water goes up, like waterboarding them. I'm like, oh my God. That was working in, that or, was perio. So, or That was working in, every single patient was Or they're so fine. Sensitive. Yeah. Or they're fine, but you know how sometimes you can get those zingers oh, you yeah. hit a certain yeah. area mm-hmm. and it zings yeah. and that'll happen. And I feel horrible, but you, we we don't know when that's going to happen. I like, document you know. that. When that happens, I put it in my notes. Oh, I do time. too. Like, I, watch out. 30 like, mesial. Do not be yeah, careful. 30 mesial. <laughs> or, 
So underneath Julie, Amanda wrote, I love this idea. I also say, let me test it out on a lower Mm -hmm. setting. Mm -hmm. Maybe someone had it turned up way too much in the past. Mm -hmm. And then of course, we don't change yes. the settings. We just <laughs> yeah, I was just going to say that. Or reset. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Yeah. But here's my question. So in our operatories, we have water bottles that we use, like, you know, the reverse osmosis, blah, blah, yeah, blah. We and then we put, a, we put a sterilization tab yeah. in it. Mm-hmm. And it's just like water, like that. it's cold, but, you know, it sits in there all day. So it's like, I say cool. It's not cold. But somebody said use warm water. I do. I, I fill I fill it do with, that. No, I fill it with hot water. I fill my my uh what do you call them? The bottles up with hot so water. I, I had do my it does it so stay what about hot your throughout lines? the day? What? No, but what mm-hmm. about your lines? Isn't that like you're not supposed to do that because of like the, the hot, the moisture, the dark I mean it's it, like, not like that hot. It's not like hundred and ten degrees or anything. You know, it's it's like below boiling. Like it's not like um it's maybe like ninety eight degrees 100 degrees which is body temperature so it's not like too hot too cold and it's not really going to damage the I didn't lines. know I didn't know we could use hot water I like, did that I mean not like just hot I, I not- did um, a lot of warm water because my piezo unit had its own reservoir yeah yes mm-hmm. I, we have a piezo that has its own and I put yes. warm water in that and so I would if mm-hmm. I knew I had somebody coming because it in has who its was own just, like, super super sensitive definitely needed the piezo I would go put basically hot water in it and but where I where I work now, yeah. that's not an option. So, mm-hmm. and Anna's gonna roll her eyes so big and cuss so much when <laughs> no, I say I won't. this. But yeah, I, won't. You will. I promise. Go ahead. Or maybe <laughs> it? some of my I have one patient or two or three or four maybe or ten know. or seventy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that have super sensitive teeth, and it's mm-hmm. like just to make my job easier, I can't rinse them. Like it's just awful, and they can't. Like I can't let them swish because then when they open and they're laying back, they like, don't know how to like, let me just. Oh, and you guys don't out. have cuspidors, Ew, right? No. no. Okay. So Ew, no, no, I agree. Like I can't stand the cuspidor in, in New York though. It's very strange. Actually the Northeast, 99% of the offices still have cuspidors That's here. So weird to me. Okay. Yeah. No, that I do not. Been a, but what no, I have is been a this, thing. I have this funnel thing that goes on the high speed suction. Yeah. That they, you know, you turn the high speed section on oh. and they spit into it and it just takes it down. So I do have that <gasps> as like a backup if someone does not want to be rinsed or they what? feel like their <laughs> saliva is. Toxic. I just saw Heather's life change. Can you get that through like, <laughs> mm-hmm. can you get that through like what, Patterson or Henry Shine? Uh, Henry Shine has it. Holy yeah, it's like, a, it's literally a plastic thing. You just buy one plastic thing and then, yes. yeah, and then you, they, they have these inserts that you put in it that you buy, you know on a monthly yeah, yeah, basis yeah. or whatever Girl, don't be don't be um, so what i was doing you're was, gonna cater to more patients <laughs> yeah that's no, true because but, i really do have like these little old ladies that are super like i love them but they like and her and not especially one patient we just crack up because she will swish because she's very like sensitive and then she like tries to purse her uh-huh. lips to get in like all the water and then i try to put the suction and i'm like you can't do that Why? Can I go ask? All over you. Will she pay for for uh, fluoride varnish? Oh yeah. Oh okay, good. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, this lady. Yeah, she comes mm-hmm. in every three months for a profi, just because mm-hmm. she mm-hmm. doesn't like her fil- teeth to feel dirty. Yeah, I love her. But I um, feel like varnish is really helpful for sensitivity. At least it is for me. Like, I don't. I, it really. I, I don't. feel it is. No. No. Like the laser. I, I'm telling you. Dial no, I know the laser. laser works if it's too. cervical, mm-hmm. cervical, but. So, what? okay, back to what I was going to say. Sorry, squirrel. We got off. Mm. I will get a little cup, like a Dixie cup, and put hot water in it. And then I get one of those syringes that we give people after an extraction. Mm. And those people that are really sensitive to cold water just make my life easier. I will fill the suction, the little syringe full mm. of hot are water. bottle feeding them hot egg. water? And then, uh, You're and a then good rinse them. egg, man. <laughs> and then rinse them with the hot You're water. Nice. I ain't doing that shit. <laughs> I ain't doing I that. Know. See, I I told you, I told you you would roll your eyes at me. Nice. You know, I ain't doing oh that. Oh my god, I ain't doing that. I mean, yeah, okay. <laughs> what do you guys do for patients that are late? Your late patients that are like, because that's a difficult scenario too. Because then they're like, oh, well, I'm only 15 minutes late, and like, um, my watch says, you know, I'm only 14 minutes late, and it, you know what I mean. Yeah. Like, so how do you like? How do you guys handle that? 
Well, if they're if they're fifteen minutes situation. late, they're rescheduled. But generally speaking, mm-hmm. we don't have that problem. Maybe one or two. That's good. And I always I always have that I, problem. I, I don't know always what it try is. to remember when they're late to document it because mm-hmm. there are some people who are chronically late. Chronic. And I just want to make sure mm-hmm. that if mm-hmm. we have to dismiss them or something like that, that you know we show us a pattern of it. Mm-hmm. I mean, we do have like their no shows in their ledger and stuff like that, but yeah. But if they're also chronically late and doing no shows and whatever, um, I just want to make sure that that's that that's documented. Mm-hmm. We are having a problem. Like we just had a a discussion about patients who are late and then they need like FMX that day. And then it makes us run behind all day. So that mm-hmm. is difficult. Yeah. So we're trying to figure out how to, to work around that. But I mean, generally speaking, um, my, my patient base is pretty good. My big thing is, for the love of God, fill out your paperwork before you come into the office. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. That is like such, I, people who are late, that isn't the problem. It's people who spend 20 minutes filling out the paperwork when they come in. It's like, it's what's so hard. Just your name, your address, your phone number. So I guess like (laughs) what needs to happen is no, I know I get it. We, what I can do, but I never know how long it's going to take them. So, you know, our little light turns yellow. That means they're filling out paperwork. So I'm waiting and waiting, waiting. What I'm going to start doing is saying you can finish this after your appointment. Exactly. That's what we do. We do. We got to get this appointment started. You can, while you're waiting for the doctor for the exam, you can finish this paperwork. Yeah. Yeah. We have iPads. Mm -hmm. If they don't like do it on their phone or they'll, they're coming in with their phone. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm like, okay, we need to put that away. You can finish it later. So Heather, what is, um, just, what do you guys do for late, late patients? Like, what is your like thing? You guys, uh, I don't know if we have like a hardcore policy. Mm-hmm. Um, I think 15, like me personally, mm-hmm. if I know, like most of my patients have been there long enough. I know mm-hmm. like, oh my God, they're running late. Mm-hmm. And so, but Usually 15 minutes, probably. After yeah. that, we're like, okay, we need to reschedule mm-hmm. you. Mm-hmm. But most of the time, they haven't shown up by then. But I've had a couple of incidences um, for this. So one, I feel like a complete and total asshole because he was late. Mm-hmm. It was like my first patient in the morning. I'm like, I it was it was morning, so I'm already like not feeling, feeling <laughs> it yet. Mm-hmm. And... <laughs> Why? I'm like, oh my. Why not? Yeah. <laughs> and my first you start at 7, at 7 a.m. But go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But I'm like, oh my God. So like he didn't answer the phone and he didn't call. So I do want to preface it with that. But finally, I'm like, yeah, no, I'm not, I'm not seeing him. We're like 15, 20 minutes into his mm-hmm. appointment. We'll mm-hmm. come to find out he was driving from over an hour away. Oh, oh. He mm-hmm. hit traffic and it was yeah. winter. Okay. And by the time he finally called us to say, which, yeah, why didn't you call mm-hmm. us sooner? To say, oh my God, I'm like almost like there. And they're like, well, sorry, like she's not going to see you. Mm-hmm. I felt like an asshole because he was almost to the office, like mm-hmm. from an hour away, fighting through traffic. But you in shouldn't the feel like an yeah. asshole. He should have called you. Right. Yeah. But I know. Yeah. That I just feel like said, an asshole. So we would probably still knowing that, you know, the patient drove that far, we would still try to figure out how to make that work, whether it be, you know, assistance yes. to the x-rays and do the polishing or, you know, whatever. <sighs> yeah. And not at that point, like the front desk just didn't know. They're mm-hmm. just like, well, it's like now 30 minutes into your appointment. So you're just going to reschedule. I did send him a gas mm-hmm. card. Not oh, from you're my nice. pocket. From the, from not from my pocket. It doesn't the matter. Office has, he was late, and you're sending him a reward for being late. No, I'm only kidding. <laughs> I'm a bitch, Anna? Anna. No, let me tell you how I deal with with late patients. I never turn them away. What I tell them is, you're 15 minutes late. I don't know if I'm going to be able to see you today, but you're more than welcome to stay mm-hmm. and wait and see if the next patient shows up or the next patient after that or what you know. Yesterday, I had a, we never schedule three patients of the same family, like in the same day, but for some reason we did this time. So it was three kids. Mom shows up uh, about 20 minutes Mm -hmm. late. So yeah. So I said to mom, I'm like, I'm going to definitely see two of your kids. But the third one, I'm like, it's up to you if you want to wait. I will try to get them in. 
there's no guarantee, but you're welcome to stay and wait. She waited. And do you know, it took me three hours until I could fit that patient back into my schedule. She's going to learn. But she waited. Cow. Yeah. But she Ooh. waited, you know, and so, so by yeah. doing that, I feel like I push it back onto the patient. Like, you're more than welcome to stay. I will do my best to fit you in. But, you know, if everyone shows up, I might not be able to. You know, and then I leave yeah. it. The ball's in their court at that yeah. point. So they can't like turn around so, and be like, oh, it's yeah. 15 minutes late and you're not going to see me. No, no, I will. I'll try to see you. But there's no guarantee. So if our patients come in late, like at 15 minutes, I still bring them back. I'm like, OK, so here's the deal. You're due for like x-rays, perio chart, blah, blah, blah. So what we will do today is do your x-rays, your perio chart. The doctor will come in and do an exam. Then if we have time, we'll do your cleaning. Mm-hmm. If we don't have time, then we'll just schedule you back for your cleaning. I've done that too. You'll have to come back. Mm-hmm. And so, but I mean, nine times out of 10, I'm able to get the cleaning done. Mm-hmm. And I know like my patients, like when it's those chronic yeah. people, I don't work so hard mm-hmm. to accommodate them. Or if it's like someone is like, it, you know, like they truly. It's not. Yeah. Just. It's not in there. Yeah. It's or not they, really they broke them. their last five appointments. It's like, yeah, I'm not really going to yeah. like value yeah. your time because yeah, yeah, you're not yeah. valuing mine. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So for SRP, do you guys have like a perio refusal form? No, no. I don't think so. We do, but I don't use I, I We have them, but I refuse to utilize them because I'm not allowing you to sign off on me giving you subpar treatment. I will do a profi one time as a courtesy. Like I'll say, I understand that maybe you weren't prepared for this out of pocket today as a one-time courtesy, I will do a very light superficial profi. It's not going to resolve your peri condition. That bacteria that's deep in your gums is going to remain there until I can get to it and get you numb. But you're here today and I know you probably want to leave with something. So I will do your regular cleaning today as a one-time courtesy. That shocks me. I do do that. I know. That shocks me too. Because I'm very like regimented, but I will do that for... Some because I absolutely I will. Like, will not. I feed the vibe. Like I get the vibe off of them. Yeah. I get the vibe. You know, like sometimes, and I get it. It takes patience, and you know, uh, a, not an episode. I'm sorry, and an appointment <laughs> or, so, or two to get used to you. <laughs> an episode. I feel like I'm an episode every time I'm at work. But anyway, no. But it, yeah. it ta- sometimes it takes patience, some time to trust mm-hmm. you, to feel comfortable with you. So. If they feel I'm not going crazy on my profi, I'm just doing like very superficial. I'm not going sub at all. Yeah. And I'm letting them know that this is going to be a very light, quick cleaning. If that's what you want today, it's not going to do anything for you. But if you want me to do that for you, I will as a one time courtesy. But and next time to use up your insurance yeah. money. And, and that's the thing I let them time. know. Yeah, it's going to use up your time, your insurance money. It's not going to do anything for you. But if that's what you want today. I will do that for you as a one-time courtesy, but next time you come in, we do need to address your perio. So I, I do do that. Do you have like, so my doctors are part of like a spear study yeah. club. Spears and as in Brittany? That, <laughs> yeah. Spear. Yeah. No <laughs> S. Spear. Spear. And so we have access to like all these little super short videos mm-hmm. about perio or mm-hmm. like for patient education and they're all on mm-hmm. our computers. Like, I feel like me, I am a visual learner. So when I have a patient, even if they're agreeing or not agreeing, I turn them around to my computer and say, okay, here's what we're looking at. Here's what we see. Like, I'm a visual person. Mm -hmm. I take lots of intraoral pictures because I feel like a picture says what words can't. And, And you know, it's uh, like, this is why. Statistically speaking, patients. Oh, wait, I forgot the statistic. But anyway, (laughs) no, it's like they. They retain 80% of what they see, but only, I think it's like 30% of what they mm-hmm. hear. So yeah. we, uh, humans as uh, well, by nature are visual learners. can't see their teeth. Yeah. Like, especially your top teeth. We're like, you need a crown. I'm like, well, it doesn't hurt. I don't need a crown. Well, let me take a picture and show you yeah. why. And they're like, oh God, that's yeah. gross. Ew. Yeah. Oh, give me a new crown <laughs> right now. Mm-hmm. So I do a lot of that. We do a lot of like, I've even saved like water pick from like a, like a YouTube water pick mm-hmm. video when patients mm-hmm. want to know how to use, how to use what. So I do a lot of education that way. Sometimes I'll even just use like, okay, here's my yes. hand. Mm-hmm. My fist is the my tooth. My cuff is the gums. My jacket collar yes! is your gums. Like, mm-hmm. 
I'm I done need now. that too. Okay. <laughs> and then I have a, I have my watch. So my watch underneath my jacket is a piece of tartar. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so yeah. So yeah. Okay. We're no, just, do, yeah. yeah, we do a lot of education. We do a lot of visual. Education. Visual is very important. So, I, I agree. I, I, I show so them too. their x-rays. Yes. Show them the, I show them the tartar yes. on their x-rays where their bones should be as compared to where, where it is. Do you show them um, after the SRP? Like if you can get a big piece of calculus, I do. You keep Sometimes it I do. And show them because sometimes I don't I like to take a lot of post. Oh, I do x-rays. before I, I do before not x-rays, photos. Like if they have a shit ton of tartar yeah, and mm-hmm. stain. I will do before before and after pictures. Mm-hmm. Whew. It's amazing. Big difference. Yeah. But I will show them on their x-rays. If by, you know, sometimes on really complicated cases, I will take that bite wing just to see, like that I remove everything and then go in with my hand, you know, hand instrumentation. Uh-huh. Um yeah. and I show them. I'm like, look at the difference. And they're like, holy crap. Yeah. I I like, but um I I what are we talking I about? I love that. What <laughs> what is wrong with us? <laughs> What is going on with us today? <laughs> I just saw Anna's okay, whole face so... just glitched and she just lost everything. I was like, <laughs> I was like, wait, what are, what, are, what are we talking about? Where did we segue off into that? That is thing? hilarious. <laughs> there that... you go. Oh, God. Well, before we get too um, over all of this, go ahead, Liz. Oh, um, I was just going to say, we don't have a, if, if we do have a perio refusal form, I've never seen one. I, mm-hmm. we yeah, have one, but I wouldn't use it because I'm not going to work on somebody who needs perio or who needs SRP. Exactly. I'm not going to work on somebody. Mm-hmm. I'm not even going to be an Anna and be nice enough to do a, a nice little profi. A one little no. time polish and super scale. Absolutely. No, I, 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 I agree. It's not, it's not happening. I do it just because I, I like, I kind of gauge the patient. If I know that this patient, if I say, no, we're not doing a regular cleaning today and this patient's going to like go like yeah. insane and like go on Google and be like, this office sucks. They want me to get a $500 well, cleaning but- and I just want the cleaning, my cut and dress cover. Then I'll be like, you know, that's kind of like, I kind of get the vibe the of where is, that patient is. I think with my, my office mm-hmm. and yours is that usually with new patients, mm-hmm. they're with the doctor for an hour. So anything they yeah. need. So I see new patients. Yeah, anything they need, mm-hmm. they get mm-hmm. scheduled back for, whether it's SRP, Profi, yes. uh, Crown, Fillings. It's already explained. Yeah. So they mm-hmm. already know, generally speaking, that they're not getting cleaning date. Now, if I have room, if I have time, I will happily do their cleaning that day. I'll get started on their SRP that day if they, you know, um, mm-hmm. want that. But yeah, I don't have to be that person that judges, like, is this person going to be mad that they're not getting a cleaning today because it's explained to them up front. Yeah. Um, and I like that. That's I love good. that about our office is that, you know, they know that. We, do, we so have a mixture thing- of that. We do have a mixture of that. Sometimes, like, the doctor will see the new patient. Mm-hmm. Uh, most of the time it's with hygiene if we can, if we have an opening, but I'm booked out like four or five months. So a lot of times now new patients, instead of making them wait five months, we're putting them in the doctor schedule. But I've Why like kind of have like pre blocks. We have blocks. We have so many patients that it's literally almost impossible. I'm not even So kidding. you don't need new patients. So new patients. No, no, we need new. Uh, I want new patients. I love new patients. I think that like keeps well, the practice need thriving. Blocks. We do, we have like a template that we're supposed to follow, mm-hmm. but like. And within 24 hours. It's, yeah. It's like not fill filled. it. We're trying to do that, but it's not easy. And a lot of times, like, you know, patients are waiting three, four months just to get in. And it's like, cause we're just. Oh, that yeah. No, up. we get new patients in immediately. Like we don't, mm-hmm. we don't mess around with that. Yeah. yeah. I think the, but circling back, I think the one thing about, and this just kind of happened for me the other day, like a patient needed localized SRP. And I'm like, I can do it today. It's like mm-hmm. three teeth. Mm-hmm. This is what I'm seeing. We explain it. He didn't have insurance. He's like, I don't know. I'm going to have to go think about this. I'm getting ready to have Medicare. Maybe mm-hmm. I'll get a mm-hmm. dental plan. I'm like, okay, that's fine. Send him out with a treatment plan. But I had him sign a refusal form that says that mm-hmm. I am refusing. I've been told I have periodontal disease. They've explained it to me. Here's but you all don't the do a profi? consequences. You're not doing a profi that visit, right? No, we, I did. Okay, okay. So then that's why you need that. Okay, I was going to say, because if you didn't do the profi, yeah, so then that's Yeah, so he came in for a profi. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then mm-hmm. um, he, I periotarded and he had deep pockets on three teeth. And so anyway, I have him sign that. And I think sometimes it's good to have a perio refusal or whatever refusal because the patients read it and they're like, oh. Mm-hmm. Oh, and then they 
they're mm-hmm. like, I have to sign this. Yeah, yeah it's so like you're signing off that, like, and that tooth loss is a possibility here and you're yeah, making responsibility like, for that. Oh, mm-hmm. and then mm-hmm. to make them sit and look at that and sign mm-hmm. and date it, that patient, I saw him on a Monday. He was on my schedule Thursday for localized SRP. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And I think sometimes those refusals, even though they don't hold up in court or whatever, it makes them think. I think sometimes, like you said, it makes them think and it puts it back exactly. on them. And there's like a space that says, I will not hold. And there's like a space to mm-hmm. put the hygienist name, Heather mm-hmm. Kirby, or Doctor whoever, blah, 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 the office mm-hmm. I work for, yeah. mm-hmm. responsible for my for any yeah. ramifications yeah, of non treatment. Yeah. 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 So I, I think mean, that really kind of like makes him think. Absolutely. Even though I've already told him mm-hmm. all of that, mm-hmm. but now he's got to sign his That's name to it. That's actually a really good exactly. angle that I've not thought about. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Like if it's you not going to hold up in they, court, but they, they don't need to know that. <laughs> yeah. They don't need to know that. Well, and now they do. <laughs> no, but Thanks, they're not Emma. listening yes, to our yeah. podcast. <laughs> it and dating it. That's true. Yeah. I hope not. But um, yeah, so I think that's one good thing about a perio refusal mm-hmm. is it does like they have mm-hmm. to sign it and date yeah. it. And like, I'm going to read this to you because if yeah. I just give it, tell you to read over it, you're going to be like, whatever, it, I'm sign it. going to sign it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, whatever, I'll sign it. But if I read it and then tell you to sign it and say, I am not legally, you cannot come back and sue me, which, you know, whatever. Mm-hmm. They think about it. So we are at, sudden, voila. real quick, we're at 60 minutes. There is one thing yeah. that I wanted to yeah. kind of talk yeah. about. Um, yeah, go for it. At what point are we dismissing patients? Like, uh, when I don't you dismiss- have that call. Okay. Oh. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I don't have that call because I would dismiss a lot. <laughs> I, yeah. I would draw the line at, well, obviously inappropriate, like, sexual behavior. Yeah. Um, I would draw the line there. I would draw the line at somebody being, you know, rudeness is one thing, but being very Mm -hmm. rude, like combative, aggressive. Yeah. Like a cursing. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then just like the standard, like not repeatedly refusing care. Uh, You know, the Mm -hmm. x-rays after two years, they're going to be dismissed. If you're verbally Mm -hmm. abusive to anybody in, you know, whether it's the front desk, whether it's the dental assistants and, you know, agreed. Everyone deserves respect. For, I don't for care myself, yeah. I feel like yeah. that my office would have my back if I had an incident that happened back in my op. Of course. And I'd be like, mm-hmm. this appointment's over, you know, and tell the patient to leave. And then I, if I explain the situation, I trust that my office manager and my doctor would have my back to know because I'm they know I'm not going to take something like that lightly. Yeah, yeah you're not like a uh, pain in the yeah. ass that every day is like, I'm not seeing this patient or you're oh, not, you're no, not being a prima donna. No. You know? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. They know. And, and mm-hmm. I will say like, it's not my call to dismiss a patient in my mm-hmm. office, but if it came to that, or if I say like, I'm not seeing this patient, they can see someone else. My doctors would yeah. back me up. Yes. And there's been times I've seen patients and put up with things and they were like, I told them afterwards and they were like, What? why no way like why did you do that i'm like i don't know and they're like no it's funny so in my office it's quite the opposite my uh, dr gooch who has the authority to really technical authority to dismiss patients mm -hmm. is always like i'll come up to him be like oh my god this chick blah 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 dismiss her dismiss her and i'm like bro calm down (laughs) calm the fuck down we don't need to dismiss her (laughs) We just need to educate her. Like, so it's quite the opposite in my office where like, he's always like, fuck that, dismiss him. And I'm like, no, um, you can't just dismiss yeah. the patient because, you know, like, I don't know. We so, do, uh, it's like, we do yeah, have like the stupidest reason. Like, per- there's sometimes there's like a personality conflict where I think, yes. like, if you yeah. don't like one hygienist, mm-hmm. then, you know, I'll send them over mm-hmm. to the other. If I think that another. they would like her better. I'm not going to pawn yes. her, pawn my difficult patients off on her because I think that's really a oh, I do. thing oh, to yeah. do. I no. do. <laughs> what not? <laughs> it's it's sh- you asshole. Sh- I do it all the time. I do it a, a lot. I'm sorry. That I don't think that we just, we just don't mesh. And vice like, versa. I don't need to be aggravated. If there is a patient. <laughs> well, neither does your co No, but they're nicer, they're nicer than me. They're nicer than me. They can handle that's that. That's a difference than in personality. And that's exactly what I'm talking about. Yes. 
And, you know, mm-hmm. if, if the other hygienist, she has somebody with a really strong, a patient with a really strong personality that would probably be better suited, you know, with me, then, you know, we'll, mm-hmm. we'll switch off. Yeah. I can handle those people, but I don't want to. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, I am a very nice person. Like, obviously, <laughs> you tell me I'm too nice. So obviously. I'm not. You're n- no, but, but I put, I put a that pop That doesn't up. mean I want those asshole patients or sorry we're not patient <laughs> you have to we remind yourself i don't want now. those difficult <laughs> patients on my schedule all day because then i'm not gonna be like it's gonna be a bad day yeah happy it's gonna be a bad day it's too yeah, much i don't want that every day yeah. anna so i i so i do a lot of does she get mad at you for doing that i don't care anna <laughs> <laughs> You liar. No, because like there's just sometimes personalities don't mesh. Um, well, that's uh, different. Yeah. But... Like, no. Um, so I will point it off on the other hygienist because she's much nicer and more tolerant than I am, I want to say. So the patient's going to have a better. to ask her. We're no, going to have her on the show. Right. She'll be fine. <laughs> We're going to have her on our <laughs> okay. We're going to yeah. have her on the show next time. So what's it like working with You know Anna? what? That would be hilarious. <laughs> no. Like have our co hygienist on. <laughs> We should do that. Yes. Oh my God. <laughs> but I don't know. You know, so I, I put a pop up in, uh, uh, you know, a lot of patients charts that say Anna will not see this patient because yeah. I won't like I'm not I won't. I'm sorry. I'm not. You want to keep this patient in the practice. That's fine. Yeah. Go at it. But I am not seeing this patient. I had a patient last yeah. week that I did this with that. I think I told you guys about this, but she was just like I was like, so, you know, because. I walk into my office and I walk in and I'm like, okay, deep breath. You're an actor. Mm -hmm, Yeah. And I walk in and I'm like, hi, welcome to blah, blah, blah. (laughs) Anna's not winning any Oscars. Yeah, no. And I'm like, I'm your hygienist, Anna. (laughs) Anyway. um, (laughs) (laughs) Sorry. (laughs) No, but it's like you're an actor for eight hours a day. And sometimes it is. You are. And sometimes that's just it's not enough. It's exhausting. And I had this one patient that I was trying my best to be really nice to. And she was just so rude. And like, I was like, oh, are you sensitive in this area? And she was like, just keep going. Yikes. Just do it. Yikes. And I was like, <laughs> all right, well, I just want to kind of document if you're like sensitive in this area. So next time, you know, we know maybe we need to hand scale this area or whatever. Just whatever. Just whatever. Just do it. So I'm like, all right, whatever. <laughs> so I go to the front desk. I put my router down and I'm like, I will never, yes. ever, ever see this patient again. Yeah, you told me about that. Fuck that. Not doing it, right? I come to find <laughs> out. Wait, I come to find out her estranged husband yeah. was flirting with my assistant. So she must have like gotten word of that. Like there was some sort of like thing there. Uh-huh. So she's now in Ooh. our office. I don't know if she thought it was me. That's what or I she, was going to say. Didn't really, I don't, yeah. But I, can't, I I texted my assistant. I'm like, yo, you know this, page, you know. And she was like, oh, my God. Blah, blah, blah. And she was like, yeah, that guy, he, you know, brought me food at the office. We exchanged numbers. Oh. And supposedly, like, they're, like, estranged from each other. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, well, bitch was just here and was, like, all up in my face. <laughs> like, So I kind of, like. Yeah, so, but I kind of got... And she wanted you to hurt her. No, but I kind of, like, understood after that. I was like, all right, well, she might think that it was me that was, like, trying to get with her man, and it wasn't, but, you know, so she's, like, extra salty. All right. You know, or she's just a bitch, and that's why her husband left her. I don't know. (laughs) Yeah. I don't know. Well, yeah, I would have think the opposite. I've been, like, if she thought it was you, every mm-hmm. little move mm-hmm. you make, she'd be like, "Out! I'm going to complain. Out! Stop that. Oh, mm-hmm. you yeah. suck. Yeah. Instead of maybe more. Yeah, maybe. but I still won't. I, I still re, I, I still will not ever see that patient again. I won't. I'm not I'm not a what's the word like a, I don't know, a punching bag. I'm not a punching bag. Oh, yeah. Like you want to be salty and rude and whatnot. That's great. Good for you. I'm not going to deal with that. And I will be yeah. nice to you while you're in my chair, but I will never, ever, ever clinically treat you again. And that's just the way I deal with it. Good. Good for you. Mm-hmm. We have one thing I want to say before we wrap it up. Mm-hmm. Um, Jessica Mitchell posted the other day. 
So I had this B today. She kind of had an attitude from the start. As I start her profi, I said something along the lines of, do you travel in the winter mm-hmm. at all? And I think that this post caught me because I live in Indiana and we have a lot of snowbirds. So right mm-hmm. now I feel like I'm asking that question a lot. She, and she goes on to say, we live in New York. And that's most the problem right really- there. <laughs> you live in New York. <laughs> you live in New yeah. York. We do not like small talk. Don't talk to me about my personal <laughs> shit. Keep going. <laughs> yeah. And that just blows my mind. I know. Blows, it's crazy. I mean, I know I there's days I wish. Okay. So anyway, we live in New York and most patients, really everyone tries to get a break from the winter since it's so long here. Her response was, I really don't want you to talk to me while you do this. In 23 years, I have never had anyone say something like that to me. And she was a total B about it. So I pretty much said nothing for the rest of the mm-hmm. appointment. And so, of course, there were like, everyone's like, yeah, she's a bitch. But then there's a lot of of hygienists posted as like, oh, my God, thank you. I wish all my patients would tell me not to talk. Exactly. I feel that way. Enjoy the silence. But (laughs) And I do I do have some patients that there's a note that says does not like chit chat. And I will say I will admit that I was like, rude. What a bitch or asshole. But now I love those patients Mm -hmm. because you guys know, and everyone in us in our career knows like every hour, assuming that you see a patient every hour in a year is whatever, Mm -hmm. (laughs) whatever, whatever to an hour. (laughs) No, I'm an assistant. I I do assistant hygiene. I do two columns. Yeah. Yeah. So by the end of the day, I am spent. Mm -hmm. On mm-hmm. making small talk. And when I get home, I have no energy left for my family. No, you're right. I don't care how their day went because I've asked 10 people today how their day went and made mm-hmm. small talk. So now I enjoy those patients that say, no chit chat. Mm-hmm. Great. Let me ask you all the questions. As soon as I sit you down, when I lay you back, it'll be dead silence. Mm-hmm. And I am not offended. I don't care. Mm-hmm. But there's, there's a way. A way and if you're being a patient sits down and says it in a shitty, yeah. rude way, like shut mm-hmm. the fuck up yes. and do your job. Oh, no. Goodbye. Yeah. No, no, no. That doesn't fly. And even like I, I will admit for me personally, because I am a people pleaser. If someone says, look, I've had a long day and I'm just tired. I just want to lay back. No talking today. I'd be like, mm-hmm. yeah, that's great. Fine. Inside a little bit. I might be like, oh, man, they're like, you don't like me. No. Mm-hmm. But. I don't care. There's just a way yeah. to say it. And that's what that's I know. That's what she up. I mean, that's kind of what she alluded to because she said, I mean, she out from the jump said, you know, this patient was a total, a total bitch um to her. Yeah. And yeah. Was basically just like, shut up. I don't want you to talk to me. And that's I, like you said, there's a way. I have had patients too. They're like, you know, I just, you know, I'm nervous. And if we could just not chit chat, because they'll um, they're trying to kind of meditate their way through. I've had several patients mm-hmm. that are trying to meditate their way through the appointment. And I'm like, fine, you know, that's great. Good on you. We'll, we'll sit there in comfortable silence and do our thing. But for somebody mm-hmm. to just be like that bitchy and just be like, shut the fuck up and do your job. No. Yeah. Can't. No, don't no. talk yeah. to me like that. No, I that's had a patient once that I think I was asking him something. I don't remember what it was, but he's like, you need to just sit down and clean my teeth. That's what he said to me. <laughs> so what I, what oh. I do, I press the button that brings them back uh-huh. up, you know, like, cause he was, he was reclined. Yeah. So I pressed like number one to bring him back up. And I was like, we're done here today. Have a great day. <laughs> and I walked out. We're not yeah. doing this. Like, so I, I am the type of person. I do not like small talk. I'm not like a sharer. Like if you ask me where I'm going on vacation, right. I will tell you. But it makes me a little uncomfortable. I'm not like, don't get into my personal life. How many kids you got? Like, how old are they? What grade are they in? <laughs> what did you do last night? What, you know, it's not my thing. However, I will not be rude about it. I will just answer the question and like kind of not yeah. ask back because I don't give a fuck. Right. You know what I mean? Like, I'm not, I don't care what like you did last week. I don't. I'm sorry. Like, to me, it's fake <laughs> when people like interact that way. But that's just me. <laughs> I like how Liz said how she would have 
Mm -hmm. You posted on there how you would have Oh, yeah. Yeah, I would have put it kind of back on them and made them think about their actions and just been like, oh, I'm so sorry. Like, I was just trying to be friendly and make your day a little brighter by, you know, maybe focusing on something fun. But honestly, you just kind of hurt my feelings and then just kind of sit there in silence the rest of the time and make them think about like, what an asshole. (laughs) I wouldn't have said that last part. No, I'm serious. (laughs) Be like, oh, that kind of hurt my feelings a little. But okay, you know, if that's what you want to do, then we'll do that. And then just be dead silent because I don't have I don't have feelings you can hurt right like I'm like whatever um I do I hate it and I'll just but I I would want them to think about like how they're interacting Mm -hmm. with people because they may get somebody who that would really affect that would ruin somebody's whole damn day right with me I'm like whatever yeah okay Let's just get this over. I actually just say to them, like, I would just be like, all right, cool. I hate small talk. Let's do this, biatch. Like, let's get to it. Like, (laughs) let's do this thing. We on the same page. (laughs) Oh, my goodness. Yeah. If you don't want me to talk. But then Anna and I were talking, like, before you Mm -hmm. got on, Liz. There's some people that are like, I'm nervous. I need you to talk the whole time. Oh, Like, you talking makes it. That's awkward. That's the other opposite end of the spectrum. It's very awkward. See, I think it's awkward to be in somebody's mouth that close in their personal space and not talk is awkward to me. So yeah. that's why I prefer to have a little small talk mm-hmm. because you it's awkward. You know what I do? Mm-hmm. Because the silence to me is awkward just because, I mean, I do have, yes. I do have my, like some music being piped in from the radio, but what like, I... Liz and I are both Hoosiers. Something that I do when it's just quiet and we're not talking is I just flip on my um my uh my suction so there's just like this ambient white noise. And for exactly for some reason That's it makes it better to me. It makes it less awkward. I'll have to try that. Um and then also because when you're just sitting there it's like silent, even though I've got like my music that's kind of quiet in the background, like you can hear like tummy grumbles and all kinds <laughs> of like, you know. Liz is just trying to cover up her IBS. <laughs> I don't even have IBS, but like even the patients, like I, I know, I'm like I can tell, I know some of my patients probably do because like their stomach just be growling like the whole time, and I'm just like, oh my, God. I'm like, oh, your tummy's talking to my tummy. I've We're both said that before too, yeah. But yeah, I just turn on my suction and leave it on, and it just for some reason that white noise is a little bit more soothing to. I don't know. It just fills up the the silent space. I don't, I don't know. Yes. It's just yeah. something that might be. I agree. I think this is funny. Somebody put on Jessica's post, she just put, and I think this is funny because I say this every day in my own mm-hmm. life as a joke. Yeah. I hate it here. <laughs> and I'm always like, fun. I hate it here. Me too. I always say it to yeah. that when they're like, I hate the dentist. I'm like, oh my God, me too. <laughs> Girl, we on point. Yeah. yeah. Well, so before we wrap it up, I came up with a couple of like just things that I do, I guess maybe tips that kind of help me get through these difficult mm-hmm. patients. One is remembering, and somebody else said this, is that fear is not their right. fault. Mm-hmm. So some people just can't control yeah. their fear and mm-hmm. it comes out yeah. as being an asshole Anxiety sometimes manifests or a bunch of needy ways. or whatever. Or they have something yeah. in their personal life happening that makes them just yeah. like bitter. Yes. Their husband's f- yep. assistant. We never yes. know what someone else is going through. <laughs> yeah. The one thing that I always try to do, and I am sincere, is when I go up and say, hey, Mrs. Jane Doe, your time's up. Come on down. Price is right. It's your turn. You know, all my little corny dad joke things. And they get up and I can tell like they're just kind of like, Ugh. <laughs> I'm like, oh, I. I love your shirt. Yeah, I I try to find something to compliment. I always compliment them. them. Like I love your nails. I love your shoes. Yes, I love, I love your love, shirt. Yes, yeah. I love your shoes. Your shirt, and I try to make it yes. genuine. Yeah. Um. Even though it's not, I'm kidding. And no. that usually is like, oh, 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 oh. Well, mm-hmm. thank you. So that kind of mm-hmm. always helps complimenting yes. someone before they even um, blame insurance. A lot of times. Yes. I have to have this x-ray because insurance dictates it. So if you want this to be paid for. We need to get the x-ray. I say that all the time. We need to get the x-ray or you need to call. Yeah, it's not even a lie anymore. And that is true. Like it's Mm -hmm. it's the absolute truth. It's not even a lie. Yeah. And even sometimes the x-ray is not enough. So I've had, there are people that said legally we have to. I don't know if 
every state's different. So I don't know if legally is mm-hmm. correct. We have to what? We whatever. Have to what? Do x-rays. Legally, it's time we have to do it. Legally, we have to do this. Mm-hmm. So if you throw that word legally yeah. in, sometimes yeah. it's kind of like, mm-hmm. oh, yeah. okay. My or license I have is on license. the line. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. My thing is when people, it's like, I know it's like, it's been two years and need x-rays and they're still arguing with me. I say, oh, okay, well, let me go get yep. the doctor. Put it on them. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Let me go get the doctor and then they can come in and then you can talk to him about, and then you're just like, oh, <coughs> no, never they mind. They will I'll not argue with the doctor. And that's what, I, when I had my grumpy mm-hmm. man no. patient the other day, I sent him a message back and I said, they'll argue all day long with me, but they will not argue with you. And he said, I know. <laughs> mm-hmm. It's true. And so the other thing, like somebody said, like their patient was just like so off and like grouchy and she just sat there and I did this actually this week to a patient who is a kind of like a family friend and they were just off. And I just sat there and I said, are you okay? Is everything okay? Mm -hmm. Now, when you say that, be prepared because they're either Mm going to start crying (laughs) or they're going to tell you, I'm fine. (laughs) Leave me alone. Fine. And then it's like, yeah. and then it's like, okay, here we go. So that is a good way to say like, is everything okay? Like if they're being that. Like, super bitchy, mm-hmm. like, is it, and then that kind of puts them on the spot to be like, oh, I guess I am being a bitch. Mm-hmm. Why? And then the last thing thing is, is just reminding patients, this isn't for me. This is yeah. for you. Like you came here to us mm-hmm. for a health purpose. Mm-hmm. We can't fix what we can't see. So you're not allowing us to do our job, like putting it back on them. Yes, absolutely. Just some tips. No, I agree. My biggest thing with every patient that like is like that animosity toward, I always say, even though I don't understand, maybe I will always say, I totally get where you're coming from. Mm -hmm. I feel like that kind of flips it. Like, I get where you're coming from. Like, Like, hey, I'm one of you. I I get it. I, I hate dental work too. I hate x-rays too. They're so uncomfortable. Yes. I totally get it. Yep. But yeah. I wish I could do that for you, but. Um, but I can't. It's yeah, like my it, job. It's yeah. Like, so I kind of like turn it around where like I sympathize with them and then put it back on them. Like, I totally get it. I understand where you're coming from. This, you weren't prepared for this today. That's fine. We can, you know, what I will do next visit or whatever. Yeah. And it kind of makes them feel validated, I want to say. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, like, so you're Which doing... Which is a, a big thing. Yeah, yeah they want to feel validated. Fine, I will validate you, but I'm still not going to bend because this is what we yeah. need to do. Yeah, especially if they have fear. They just mm-hmm. want to make sure that we hear them. Yeah. So... With that we're said... we um, We're like yeah. an hour and 20 minutes in, so I think um, I we need to wrap, Let's wrap this it up. up. Who's doing the outro? Um, I can do it. Yeah. Uh, Thanks for listening to our very long episode. Uh, We hope you found it helpful. You can join us on Facebook. We have a group, RDH Rant. You have to be a hygienist to get in, and we will need your license number to verify that to keep everybody safe and protected. Also, find us on Instagram. We are so close to having 2,000 followers. So if you're listening, please give us a follow. And anyone can join anyone Instagram. Anyone can join Instagram. It's completely public. We do have a TikTok that is very much unused and unloved, but it's there. Maybe one of these days I'll get off my ass and actually do something with it. So anyway, until next time, love, peace, and brush your teeth. Bye. 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 Bye.